There ain't no crease when I'm stepping. Ziploc gang, what I'm rapping. My dog, Vic up in heaven. You know I'll never forget him. Respect to his parents. What's up, internet? Brian Spillwell here with another episode in beautiful, hot, sunny California. And today, if you can see off in the distance, we have another fire. Uh, typical California. Yeah, so today, I just wanted to talk about uh, my actual uh, musical background and whatnot. You know, as as everybody knows, you know, who watches the channel, you know, I rap and stuff and make uh, my own music and shit. And uh, with being a rapper and everything, you know, comes with the cliche of, you know, I don't listen to anything else. I don't know anything about music. I can't play an instrument or, you know, all that. Yeah, so, but with all that being said, you know, Mr. Spillwell, isn't that type of guy and I thought I'd fill you guys in you know on uh, my musical background and uh, you know what I've played and stuff like that and uh, what kind of music I'm really into you know besides you know all the obvious hip-hop and rap <clears throat> so it all started probably around when I was around four or five uh, my parents got me my first uh, drum set you know, and it was a pretty legit set, a Pearl set, I believe, you know, from what I remember. Uh, I had an older cousin who was actually uh, in a couple of pretty uh, halfway successful uh, rock punk bands, you know. And so, uh, you know, I got into drumming at a pretty early age. And then, uh, you know, with that, obviously, oh shit, you can see the helicopter. With that, uh, you know, made a lot of noise, and then uh, the better I got, you know, the more I would play and stuff like that. So, <laughs> my parents ended up uh, wanting to get rid of that, so they got rid of the drums, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't really have a say in it. So, a few years later, well, not a few, quite a few, I picked up uh, the guitar, you know, and then, uh, you know, I had some some pretty cool friends, you know, freshman year, high school that, uh, you know, hooked me up with some old uh, crate amps and other stuff that I needed, and then eventually I ended up uh, buying a, a, a good Ibanez, you know, with dual humbuckers, like it was a legit guitar, which, you know, I played for years. I want to at least say four or five years, like I, I could still play and read music and all that good stuff, but uh, that was back when I was actually skateboarding amateur and shit uh, and uh, one day I was just actually outside my front in the front yard and I went to go pedal out to warm up I had like a rail and fun box fun box and all this shit but I went to go pedal out you know you how you run out and you throw your board down and you just hop on it I just did that basic one little thing and there happened to be a rock right there and I uh, caught the rock and uh, flipped over and put my hand out like that and as I was laying down, I could see all my fingers like had hyper extended and uh, basically they were touching my palms. So I got up real quick, tried to shake it off, and then you know by the time I even walked inside, my hand was freaking looked like a Mickey Mouse glove and shit. Oop, is, excuse my language. It looked like a Mickey Mouse glove. It was just all swollen, so you know I had to go get it freaking half casted and all that BS you know and I fractured like almost every one of my knuckles which left me out of being able to play the guitar for a, a long time and then when I did finally pick it back up you know the movement with uh, with pulling on the strings and everything it, it, it just hurt it was really bad for a good year year or two so I, I ended up actually you know giving that up you know unfortunately and just stopped playing all together and uh, you know I really wish that I, I wouldn't have you know I, I should have just kept pushing through the pain because I mean I, I still get the cramps a lot just from doing the clutch and stuff like that like this hand is just completely shot like it, it's kind of beat up but you know I could still still play and stuff like that but I just no longer have a guitar or anything and I used to have all kinds of them you know acoustic electric you know all that good stuff 
and then uh, you know with all that happening uh, my buddy Paltro uh, at the time was uh, you know just getting into to rap and stuff like that and he had built a booth up at his crib that his dad you know got a pretty legit set up going for him and he got this thing called the Miko you know which led to me getting you know into my own little drum beat machines because yeah, in the high school I had a bunch of friends you know that were all we we're all into different types of music rock reggae freaking uh, drum and bass was just coming out real heavy back then like so we used to you know mess with all kinds of like those little drum beat machines and stuff like that too as well you know that you could just like set a drum loop on and you know we vibe out to that and spin some records someone always had a turntable back in the day too as well so you know i also got into that and you know if you guys watch my instagram i do that every now and then you know I'll hop on live and uh, spin some records and do some mixing and stuff so I'm just all mixed up, man, and uh, you know, I, partly because of that is uh, due to my mom's influence. Uh, she was, her and my dad, you know, they listened to, you know, the classics, of course, but, you know, they also at a young age let me listen to Tupac. Right when Eminem came out, my mom actually got, you know, got it and was like, oh, we gotta listen to this, like, so luckily, thanks to my mom, you know, she got me into, you know, Eminem and all kinds of other stuff at a young age. Metallica, you know, I had cousins who took me to Ozfest and, you know, so I've, I've had both sides, you know, listen to Wu-Tang and Deltron, the funky homo sapien, you know, freaking visionaries. And of course, reggae, you know, <laughs> I had a lot of buddies that were into that and, you know, of course, you know, I was into that too for some period of time, you know, and I still love listening to it. So it's like, I listen to everything and, you know, just like I said, it just sucks with being a rapper. Everybody tends to only think, you know, you're only into that one genre. But if you came to my house and look at my, uh, look through my crate of records, you would find stuff all the way from B.B. King to <laughs> Mariah Carey to just all types of stuff that you would just be like, what? Elvis, Woo! all kinds of stuff, you know, but then again, those are uh, for extracting samples and just, you know, playing little backups while I'm cutting records or whatever, you know, the case may be. So I, I have a bunch of just, you know, different genres of music. And uh, like I said, if it's if it sounds good, it's good quality. It's got some good, uh, good tones and melodies to it. You know, I'm with it, whatever it is. You know, except for country for some reason. I don't know what it is, guys. Forgive me if you listen to country. I just, every everyone sounds exactly the same. And, you know, talking about their truck and their girlfriend leaving them and whiskey or whatever. <laughs> but like, I don't know, you know, it's like, uh, that's the only thing I don't really play with. I don't listen to it at all. I don't even try to look for a sample through nothing. <laughs> It's kind of crazy to think about it how long I've actually been rapping now and it was you know like I said that was all due to my buddy Paltrow he was like dude you're actually out here in the streets you're out here actually doing stuff living the life you know just just get into it and you know some of the first kind of freestyles that we just did were some of my favorite where I was just like when I actually got a little loose and opened up I was like oh man I could actually do this and that's one of my my favorite things is actually just you know hitting a beat and just you know actually a freestyle not not the stuff you guys see in interviews and stuff where it's like it's a verse from one of their songs and they call it a freestyle just because it's on a different beat but no I actually like creating stuff off the top of my head you can see that smoke out there Hopefully they get it under control before it gets too bad. They bad. Man, it's all smoky up here. Yeah, you can see it off in the distance already. It's all gray. It's already filling up everywhere. That fire started maybe about like two, three hours ago. It's somewhere on the highway 330. 
Yeah, so... In my early high school years, I mostly listened to, to just rock and punk rock, you know, Minor Threat, The Ramones, Misfits, of course, uh, System of a Down, Metallica, you know, uh, this one band called uh, X Japan, obviously they were a Japanese hardcore metal band, uh, they sounded a lot like uh, Metallica, but these guys were before Metallica, so... You know, that kind of goes, you know, have something to say, but all these guys from ex Japan ended up dying some kind of crazy way, like, I forgot the story back then, but, you know, I listened to them, and, you know, Wu-Tang, I listened to a lot of Wu-Tang in high school, and then, of course, when uh, 50 Cent came out, whoo, man, those, those were the days, man, music was, was fire, that high, great quality stuff, none of this little yaddy little oozy fucking little pump bs it's all garbage man oh 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 yeah yeah man you guys are all a knockoff of trying to sound like little wayne like you guys are not original you guys can't even rap either yeah so the, like those are my influences and the whole point of me making this video is just you know, to put that out there, just because one person does one thing, you know, you, you could find some guy who probably, who's in a metal band and, uh, you know, he listens to, you know, the same stuff I do, hip-hop and all that stuff on the side too. I mean, everybody, you can listen to everything is what I'm saying. You don't have to particularly be like all set in stone and be like, nah, I gotta listen to just this, you know, or, or I'm not real to the culture or whatever, you know. You know, some people get that twisted up in their head and, you know, they think you can only be defined by one thing when, uh, that's just not the case. That's just, you know, it's ignorant. That's ignorant. <laughs> so I may be jumping around in my timeline and stuff, but I also forgot, uh, in, uh, middle school I played the trumpet and drums and then, uh, for, uh, at Arrowview Middle School. You know, they used to let you, like, take home, uh, this, this stuff, and then you'd bring it back, obviously. And then in, uh, high school, I had all kinds of music appreciation classes where, you know, we went through, you know, the start and, you know, just all the, the old school cuts and how the, the bands came together, Motown, the start of Motown, and, you know, all that movement out there, like... I've been, like I said, submerged in it all. <laughs> 10 miles an hour, guys. That's how fucking steep this turn is. Let's not scrape the shoe. <laughs> What kind of got me to the conclusion of bringing up this whole topic of the video is obviously I was a big fan of uh, Chester Bennington uh, from Lincoln Park and he just passed away a few days ago and uh, you know if you guys don't know their background they were actual you know the same thing they were you know uh, in the rapping and all that stuff as well if you look at Mike Shinoda's other groups and stuff he was with demigods and you know some some real big underground names and you know it was like at that time like I said when they came out like I was like oh man it is you can do it all like look at these guys they're just tearing it up so I want to just do a quick mention uh you know I have Peter Chester you know and it's just kind of crazy on the, the birthday of Chris Cornell if you guys don't know he just you know hung himself too a few months ago you know Chester took his life on uh, Chris Cornell's birthday and those guys were, you know, supposedly really, really tight, so, you know, the pain in life is, you know, somewhat, is too much sometimes for people to take, and it's truly sad. He left it behind, you know, a lot of kids and stuff, and uh, millions of fans, and me being one of them, and, you know, like I said, that's what made me make this whole video, is like, you know, the influence of, you know, their music and all that stuff, and like I said, me, me seeing that in high school, like, you know, broke that kind of eggshell at the time for me open, like, oh, I don't have to just be, you know, this. 
you know I don't have to just listen to this like so you know that's what made me make this video and you know enough of me talking I'm gonna get back to the crib and uh, hey you know like subscribe share with your friends you know for now that's pretty much the only way the channel is gonna grow if you guys you know share tell your friends you know tell tell your cousins tell your mother your grandmother you know because YouTube's not going to be supporting the, the program for a while anyways but like I said we're on, uh, we're on the path to fixing that so I'll see you guys spill well out since you know these raps I'll be flowing like I'm in your house and you ain't even knowing how for dog shit on the floor to rise my city on a supermoto riding through these malls